The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's Moore as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and welcome back to Lowe's Moore and The Blueprint. Man, it's good to be back home for uh, about a week or so. Of course, so we were on vacation. When you retired, I guess you're always on vacation, but the family went on vacation and we were in North Carolina. It was great to be able to broadcast from Fayetteville, North Carolina last week uh, during the holidays. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, your 4th of July, your Independence Day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you spend a lot of time with the family. I hope you share some wonderful and powerful uh, memories and I know it was a tough year because last year we missed 4th of July or we we missed our annual family get together in North Carolina. So this was like a reprieve. And I was excited to be able uh, to be back together as a family and and safe. And then to make it back home was awesome, too. And so, you know, tonight I want to get started. Uh, this is my I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, we had some. Uh, technical difficulties uh, to, at the beginning of the show. And so we started a little late. So uh, sorry for the inconvenience. And, you know, I want to jump right in. And this again is my, uh, you can't really see it because I, I have it in the wrong hand, but over here, right, this is my seed, where it's really a little miniature basketball. And, but it is my, my pebble, right? And each show I drop this in the pond like I just did and I'm expecting a very powerful and ripple effect of each show because uh, you know the guests that I have have been so awesome so transparent man and and I hope that you have uh, gathered enough revelation enough information uh, to be able to begin to design your blueprint uh, for your life or uh, or research or pray about what it is that God's plan and assignment is for your life and start to develop your vision and your your blueprint for your future. And, and so we're, we're, we're excited tonight. So we want to jump right into it. Um, and, and I want to start out with the book of the week. Um, uh, this was a book that I purchased for for my son Isaiah, and I had an opportunity to also take a look at it. Lecrae, Unashamed, uh, awesome book. Uh, you know, if you're a busy person, right, you can you can also get it for your cell phone. You can get it as an audio, and you can listen to the book, or you can uh, gift it to your son or daughter. It is an awesome read, an awesome testimony about a life transforming uh, story about Lecrae and his upbringing. And it is just a very powerful book. And, you know, every week, you know, I give you a book of the week and and uh, you should be building your library. Everybody should have a library in their in their house. Uh, you and most people ask, how come that rich people have libraries in their homes? Right. And middle class people and people of low income have no library in their home. Right. I say that you should have a library at ever, whatever level you're in. You should start your library because in starting your library, you start to build your future. Right. You start to build towards your dream. And reading is a key. It is is it's very key. Reading and comprehension is so powerful and so important. And then. uh my next is the word of the week, which is music. Man, what would we do without music? Uh, you know, I would, you know, uh, you know, it says sound. When you look at the definition, it talks about sound, it talks about rhythm, it talks about harmony, right? And man, you know, you can listen to some music, it could drive you nuts. I mean, it could put you into a frenzy, right? And you heard me talk about on the show plenty of times about uh sound. 
Uh, you also heard me talk about uh, frequency and you heard me talk about uh, vibration. Well, music and words and movies have sounds, frequencies and vibration. If you listen to the wrong music, it can change your vibration for something for something negative. But if you listen to the right music, right, it can put you in the right mindset and it can put you in a, in a relaxed mindset. And that's why I love listening to praise and worship music, because it puts me in a in a mindset that causes me to relax and causes me to calm down. Right. It is a music soothes the, the <laughs> soothes the beast. Right. And you remember, if you look in the Bible, man, David uh, was a musician. Right. And he played right for the king. Right. When the king was angered, he said that music changed the king's frequency and vibration. So very powerful word, uh, very powerful gift that God has given us, the gift of music. And we are truly thankful for it. And then our uh, Hill and Pierce Harper affirmation quote moment of the week. I am worthy of health, wealth and love. I mean, the. the you should have a lot of these affirmations. When you wake up in the morning, you should just start talking to yourself. I am worthy of health. I am worthy of wealth. And I'm definitely worthy of love. Man, speak those affirmations to yourself. And then I added this in this second season, music and movie of the week and the music of the week is Quincy, none other than Quincy Jones. If you know the greatness of Michael Jordan, not Michael Jordan, but Michael Jackson. If you know the greatness of Michael Jackson, you have only this man who uh, was his mentor, uh, his producer and produced one of the top selling albums ever. And Quincy Jones has his own music, but one of my favorite songs of all time, what good is a, what good is a song if it doesn't, the name of it is What Good Is a Song? And the lyric says, what good is a song if it can't move you? What good is a song if you can't feel it, right? Uh, what good is a song if it can't change you, right? I love that. I love that. Uh, I, I love that album and I love uh, that particular song. And then one of my, I got a lot of favorite movies. As you know, I'm a movie buff, but August Rush is one of my favorite movies, man. I, I don't know if you've seen this before. I don't even know if it's a true story, but uh, every time I see it, I see it on television. I have to stop and look at it. Uh, check out August Rush. I mean, it is just an awesome, awesome movie. And uh, we, I'm looking forward to the Curiosity Conversation. We're going to start out with the Curiosity Conversation tonight, uh, which is going to be cool. And it has something to do with our guests. And, and so I want to just continue to keep moving forward. I want to have a congratulations. Congratulations uh, to, to Haley and Aaron. Um, man, Haley married Aaron. Aaron's a Moore, right? We were joking with them on uh, last week. Uh, she was on Bob Huck when I had Bob Huggins on the show, the coach of the West Virginia basketball team. And my she's the niece of one of my best friends, Joe Frizz, uh, who passed away from ALS uh, a few years ago, man, just my best friend. Uh, she was a little sad that he wasn't going to be at the wedding, but we tried to encourage her during one of the, during the podcast a few weeks ago. It was my pleasure to do that show. And uh, man, I love her mom. I love Haley. And I wish all the best. I wish all the best to Aaron and Haley. And, and also, Happy anniversary. Uh, last week was my daughter, Michelle, and Dakari's uh, second anniversary. Man, it, I don't know. That went so fast. That was like lightning. Can you imagine? It's two years now. It just felt like it was just a few days ago. But I want to wish them a, a, a happy anniversary and, and many, many, and many more. And also, I want to do a birthday shout out. I got some nieces, right? There you go. Des or Destiny, Daisha and Janessa, I want to say happy birthday to you guys. This is your birthday shout out from your Uncle Lowe's and love you guys, man. Hey, and you're going to have many, many more. Yeah, love you. And coming up on the Blueprint Podcast, 
I can't wait. Chris, I got my man, Chris Asinol. He's the professional golfer. And I'm looking forward to that because I'm trying to learn about this game of golf, man. I had the privilege of playing with uh, Chris a couple of times, man. He was he's awesome, man. And I didn't know it was too many uh, black golfers. But I, I remember Calvin Pete uh, was one of professional golfer. And and, and then there was a, a, another one I met at the same golf tournament. And and then Chris, Chris is going to be on next week, man. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And then I'm also looking forward to Pastor Jeffrey Willer. Man, he has an awesome story. God bless him, man. Hey, he he was on his way out of here. He had four st uh, stage four cancer. And man, he is doing awesome. I remember, you know, having an opportunity to pray with him and a group of my men in the hospital and many people that prayed for him. And man, look what God, look what God can do. Uh, so I'm looking forward to talk, talking to him about his experience and what God is doing for him right now. And, and I'm excited about it. And then, you know, on August the 1st, uh, yours truly is going to be inducted into the new, the Upstate Basketball Hall of Fame on um, August the 1st. So I don't know when the show is going to be. I don't know if we're going to be on July the 31st or August the 1st, but we're going to do something. I don't know if I'm going to do it. Uh, maybe somebody, I'll have a guest host. And, you know, I'm looking forward to the honor. You know, you don't get there. You don't get these honors by yourself. Right. You you get these. The, you so many people to be thankful for. You know, my first coach, you're my parent, my mother, particularly and and coaches and my teammates, man. You know, I mean, we're, I wouldn't be there without them. So I'm, I'm truly thankful uh, to them and excited about uh, what's going to happen on that show as well. And then my good friend. Dr. Randy Clark from the Global Awakening Ministries. Uh, I'm looking forward to him, man. Uh, I've seen Randy. I've seen God moving Randy's life and moving on in his through him to people. And I saw so many different healings, um, so many signs, wonders and miracles with Randy. I'm looking forward to that conversation, man. Don't miss that. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. And so, uh, you know, I want to jump right into this and I want to show you um, my guest tonight, I want to show you a video and and then uh, I want to jump right in and into a conversation with him. Well, somebody sing something. <laughs> do Lord. Come on here. Oh, do Lord. Yes. Well, yes. Lord, remember me. Yeah. Yeah. Do Lord. Do Lord. Do Lord. Do Lord. Remember me. Lord. Remember me. I know you yeah. want to do Lord. Do Lord. Do Lord. Lord, remember me. Help coming on here. Away, yeah. away, blue, beyond my, my, my. the blue. Say it one more time. Do, do Lord. Do Lord. Do Lord. Do Lord. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Yeah. Yeah. Do Lord. Do not remember me. Do not remember me. Do not remember me. Do not remember me. Away, away, beyond the sun. <laughs> oh man, I like that. That's awesome. And I, I want to welcome to the show uh, Milton Van. I, I call him gifted. <laughs> yeah, when I think about you, I, I think about somebody just gifted. And uh, of course, I've known you for a very, 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 very long time. And uh, it is my great pleasure to have you on the, the show tonight. It's my honor to be here. This is the Mr. Lowe's more. It's kind of weird calling you Lowe's now because you know, <laughs> I've you know, I've, you know me since I was a little tight, and you always always been Mr. More to me. So, uh, but it's it's an honor. It's an honor, honor to be here. Finally, we get a chance. Finally, to catch up. yeah. I, I you know I was saying to myself, man, uh, about like for three years, I've been trying to get in contact with you. And I was like, man, I think I could get in touch with President Obama. <laughs> <when he was in." laughs> 
<laughs> before I could get in touch with Milton. I, I, I was trying to think of what I did wrong. I said, maybe I did something, maybe I said something. Nah, uh, you didn't so you didn't wrong. do nothing. You I, didn't I do know. anything. <laughs> and, and I know you didn't, I know I didn't do anything. And I know that man, uh God has blessed you, man. And you've been, you know, just traveling around and just doing God's God's work and and um, you know, and I've enjoyed it, you know, really. I really truly enjoyed it. And I'm I'm gonna have uh um Michelle uh join me right now. She's gonna join me. Oh, oh, oh. y'all trying to catch me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we're trying to catch you. And um and we got one more person, but we we, we want to have a little conversation. This is our, what I consider. I usually don't start the curiosity conversation out in the front, but I wanted to uh, start it from from the beginning. And um, um, CB, yeah, yeah, yeah. Curiosity. Now, I want to find out in in this conversation, you know, because I noticed something that I became curious about. Right. Okay. When 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 did the comedian stuff come? The <laughs> the, the, the comedy. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've seen so many things on, on Facebook. I've enjoyed them, you know. Uh, but I but I know you to be gifted, you know, as a person, as a singer. But when did the comedy come in? <laughs> Man, I first of all, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't consider myself to be a comedian at all. Um, I, every now and again, I have a moment that happens to be funny to some people. You know what I mean? But um, I, I've never pursued a, a career or, or anything like that in, in comedy. I don't think I'm funny enough. Um, and uh, so if I if I try to be funny, it's, 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 it ain't going to work. So, <laughs> so I just... Just I just enjoy the moment whenever it shows up. Whenever it shows up. What <laughs> did you did you think Milton was funny growing up? Absolutely. 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 <laughs> we had some very interesting moments at the Boys and Girls Club that I remember wow. just laughing hysterically. And I like you said, I don't think he was trying to be funny. It just was. <laughs> it just <Lord> was. <laughs> Y'all got me. You're, with you're this. natural. <laughs> it was a, you're natural. Oh, oh my gosh, y'all got me on this one. I, what can I say? Well, just hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. Uh, we got another video of you. Oh no! So we're gonna we're gonna show you uh, this this quick video. Uh, you know, you being a comedian, oh. having a moment. Having a moment. Having That's a moment. It is. Yeah, having a moment. It's me having. <laughs> Come on, teach him. You see, you get this applicator. That's the problem now. This generation lacks application. Yes, yes. You just want to get it to the. You want to get to the fast part. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got to apply. Uh huh. You got to go through the dirty stuff. Uh huh. You got to go through the muck and the mire. Uh huh. Huh? You got to go through the process. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Get it in there. Uh huh. <laughs> Hand me the shoe, son. Hand me the shoe, son. It looks beat down. It looks battered. It looks torn. It's what else? It's what's underneath. It's what's going on. See? It's got to look dull. You got to look dull before you can look shiny. Ho! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
my god, don't let it fall. Just had a moment, right? <laughs> we were, yo, man. We was backstage um, at a at a show. Uh, we was doing something. Um, Roger, Reverend Roger Hambrick, Lady Vanessa Hambrick. We was all back there, Malik. This is back in the Lavray days, and we was just we were getting ready to do something for somebody, and we had like an hour or two to kill, and they they wanted, they wanted to shine their shoes, and they were like, Milton, you don't know how to shine. I said, I don't know how to shine no shoe. You better believe I know how to shine a shoe. And it just turned into this production and it just it fell into something. But again, yeah. if I tried to do that on purpose, it it would it fall would apart. Work. It would well, work. Oh man. I, I got you know what I got a visitor for you. I got Michael Jackson backstage. Oh, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Nobody but that Charlie Clayton. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So now the the three of you in our summer program. Yes, sir. Right in the back of the game room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you're supposed to be having church, but you had Michael Jackson and you had everything there. So, so, so what did y'all think, uh, Charlie, as your the music program director. So uh, much freedom. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with Charlie. I, I really don't even know. I know that um, we were heavy into John P. Key at the I time. I mm -hmm. on a phone call, but I'm not finished yet. So I'm <laughs> and Charlie. of course, Charlie is talking to somebody. Um, but we were, we were, we were heavy into John P. Key at the time. And somebody, I think Michelle, you correct me if I'm wrong. I think we were talking about um, he welcomed me. The he'll welcome me album had like just came out, mm -hmm. and we would in there singing "Show Up" and um, he'll welcome me and all. The, and Charlie would sit there on that broken piano, that broken upright piano, <laughs> sure with would. nails coming out the bottom. <laughs> And and we we had church in there for real for real. It was real church. Yeah. It was real no, church. It wasn't no play church. Yeah. No, no. But you had the audience. We had all we the had kids the in the in the room with you. All the kids from the camp. Well, you guys, right. kids, yo, young people yourself. You yeah. know? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, can y'all give me a little? <laughs> can you give me a little throwback? <laughs> a throwback. Charlie, can you? Charlie, can you give me a little throwback? I know you're in the parking lot. Charlie can do it. <laughs> can y'all give me a little throwback a little a can little melody me? yeah we can hear you oh, okay yeah so you start with that. the church and get into michael jackson i don't but, know how y'all went for church to michael jackson but <laughs> <laughs> that's natural for charlie too well, you know i mean natural i know that i know that when we were a part of the camp i think because of our involvement in church we just automatically took the church to to where we want. Uh oh. Right. Michael's Jeff. breaking up. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Here? Yeah, you're, you're still here. Up. You're breaking up a little bit, but can y'all give me a little a little melody for y'all pop off? Yeah, because. Ooh. Ooh. I know y'all got something good. Um, uh, Char Charlie, the one with the melody. He got the melody. No. You're melting. You, you might have to start us off. Uh, Charlie got to stop nice. moving. Uh, Charlie, we're gonna oh. lose Michael Jackson. Oh, 
Well, he's gone. Okay, can y'all give us something that Charlie uh, was trying to do? Uh, um, I can't think of what what was the what were the big um the big songs Honest. that Charlie would teach every year. Uh, more than a holiday. That was every every year, year is more every than a holiday. I it was. That song. <laughs> Go ahead. I really love that song. Help is on the way. That was another one that was. <laughs> so, so give give us a little bit of holiday. Wait, help is on the way. What was that? That was um, that was a uh, that's from Voices of Emmanuel, I think. Yeah. Oh, help is on the way. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That was yeah, a yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, um, more than a holiday. Go ahead. You, you got it. You got it, Reverend. You, you the music director. No, I don't know the key. More than a. Mm -mm. Da, da, da. Right. So you more got more than a holiday. More than rice. Michelle got the high note. Come on. Oh no, so, y'all! Oh. I don't sing soprano no more. shine away more than a Until us, a child is born. Until us, a is Something like that. Something like that. Oh, Run to us. Emmanuel, has Emmanuel has come. come. Chance for all mankind to be forgiven. A change in me is made. I am saved today. Christmas, Christmas to me. It's more, more than, than a holiday. <laughs> you see, that was terrible, but okay. More, more than, than a holiday. Keep Jesus. Oh, yeah, that was it. Uh, uh, your Christmas. Christmas. And you mm. always. And you'll and always have, have a happy holiday. holiday. Like that. Here we go. Keep Jesus. Keep, keep Jesus. Keep it's a delay. In your, in in your Christmas. Christmas. Hey, and you always. And you always. Yeah. Have a happy yeah. holiday. Me try it's a delay. We can't sing harmony. Yeah, the delay. <laughs> delay. Yeah, yeah. We can't. That's yeah, all right, man. though. Me trying to yeah. be has a God walker, right, Milton? And Milton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and man. Milton laying us all out on the floor. I saw a video recently. A Milton really? laying people out at his family gathering. <laughs> that was very similar <laughs> to what used to happen in our church right. services. We used to get right. laid out in yeah. service. How old were you guys? Whatever we did in that service, Michelle, we brought it right to the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We were yeah. in it. But you know what? Um, Seven? Low, you know what, Lowe's? Um, the thing about it is we were playing around, but it was crazy that the presence of the Lord was there. And like mm -hmm. you gave us the opportunity to be free. You know, there was no um, uh, uh, structure to what, you know, really would happen as far as the singing. You just wanted the kids to be able to enjoy, you know, singing period. So we did a lot of things, Michael Jackson, but the church thing was just, it was crazy. And a lot of kids were actually being blessed right in that environment at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, I was gonna say that also. Like, look at where we are now, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. past the Milton Van, who has you know two albums now, like three, I think one on the way, right? I'm just speaking it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to be prophetic over here. Um, <laughs> and so I feel like without that kind, we were talking today about foundation, like, we had a foundation that caused us to stay in alignment, even though we might have strayed. We're back and we're better than mm -hmm. ever. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, grateful for it. And the influence too, you know, like when you went out, Michelle, you brought people with you. Milton brought people with him. You mm -hmm. know, I brought people, and and now to see later on the people that we latched on to, they're still in ministry and preaching and and elevating. You know, it, it's just tremendous what the Lord, you know, um, allowed to happen over those years. And and we when we reflect and now look at it, you know, currently.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I wanted that. I wanted this moment, you know, the curiosity moment, because you could see um, that it wasn't just strained uh, in regards to being at the Boys and Girls Club. It was fun. I mean, mm. everybody had an opportunity to have their their moment to to be funny, right, without being criticized, and yeah. just to have a good time. And I think that's what uh, the camp was all about. And to give them a variety, because like I said earlier, music can put you in a place, uh, a bad place, right? Or mm -hmm. it can put you in a good place. And and uh, you guys put all those young people that were sitting around watching you guys <laughs> play church and play Michael Jackson and all the other songs that, that, that you got them to sing. Uh, they were always in a good place and they look forward to coming back every day. Mm -hmm. You know, and, mm -hmm. when, and when and when you left, Charlie, it was a it was a big hole. And oh, really? uh, yeah, okay. and and once we lost you and music, it was just a a big hole. We did good, but we could have been great. You you made and you guys made it great. So I, I want to say thank you guys for popping on. Um, no and I love you guys, man, and, and thanks a lot. Man. We love you too. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Michelle, so good to see you. I know. So good to see you both. <laughs> yes. Milton, you at home or are you, at, are you around? I'm around. I, yeah, I got a, I got a sleep study tonight, so I'm out this way. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would have known. I would have told you to come to the restaurant. We could have been live at New Rochelle Diner. Oh, okay. no, <laughs> no. We could have been choppy, choppy at New Rochelle yeah. Diner. <laughs> right, right. Uh, all right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Charlie, yeah. Michelle. All right. Look, Lord. There you go. <laughs> Where do y'all find these photos, Lord? <laughs> oh, they all your stuff. Uh, so we... <laughs> oh man! Before we get started, I want to say this, man: that uh, your your albums, I have, um, you know, both of them, and probably out of all the music I listen to, I listen to you the most. Really, really, and um, you know, I always tell people a few not during the course of the pandemic, but over the last three or four years of my, uh, three years of my career at the Boys and Girls Club before the retirement, um, you know, I was, I think everybody gets into a place where they're having some challenges, right? And, um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, and especially when you're doing God's work, mm -hmm. uh, the enemy is always trying to attack, particularly your mind. And, you know, I was having some moments, uh, you know, back a few years ago and I and I had just downloaded my life. Mm. And, and one of the and one of the things I could say since since I didn't know if you knew this or not, but since you uh, were young, you had an anointing on your life. Mm. Right. And I felt that. Um, every time we came in contact, me as the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club and you as a member of the club, I always felt that anointing in your life, man. And I always felt like you were going to do something special and you have. And I listened to the thing that cleared my mind as I was going to work was marvelous. <laughs> every morning I get, I get in my car and that's the first song. Boom. Wow. And, and it would just clear my head and, and 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 get me centered, you know, and all your songs have an anointing on them. And uh they have been truly a blessing in my life. Wow. That yeah. Uh, wow. Thank you very, very that means a lot to me coming from coming from you, man. Um I I, I figured out that I could sing at the Boys <laughs> and Girls Club. I'm serious. Like I, you know, Geneva Dendy. You know, was had a had a had a little children's choir at the at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, and gave me my first solo. You know, gave you know, said you try this. You know, and I sang it, and that was the first time that I can remember ever feeling good singing a song. Like, okay, wait a minute, I think I might have something here. Yeah. And um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing or anything like that, but I I I felt like this was something that was. Yeah, that I, that I should have been doing. And it was there at the Boys and Girls Club, you know what I mean? You know, you, Coleman, Miss Brown, 
you know, so it was it was a blessing. Yeah, well, I mean, we're glad that we could be present to be like Geneva and myself and Mr. Jones and Mr. Coleman, Mr. Coleman, because that was one of the most important things about the club, because it was where I found my niche. Mm. You know, and and when you get introduced to things, you don't know what it is that that gifting inside, you don't know what it is, right? And you have multiple gifts, right? There are people who are athletic, but yet they they can sing or they can dance or they can do, you, you know. Uh, so it, the responsibility of the Boys and Girls Club was to bring that out and for you to find something you could hang your hat on, you know, and move you forward. So, uh, man, when you and Michelle were singing, and Charlie, mm. you know, when he was doing the whole music thing, the people that came for, forward to sing, right? We noticed right away, man, that there was a a, a calling and a gifting there mm. and an anointing. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I want to jump right in. Well, we already in it, but, uh, you know, to talk about, you know, because there's three important questions I, I, I focus on in, in regards to the, the podcast. And number one, is the importance of family number two um well the third one should be first but i'll start with the first two importance of family importance of education and importance of um faith so take me through growing up you know mom dad siblings and you know to walk me through that and you know, my, my wife was saying Psalms 51, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I got a lot of song. I, I got a lot of them I, I, I really enjoy, you know. But, wow. Um, so take me through. Um, South side of Mount Vernon, 6 Madison Street between Franklin and Union. Um, that's where I live. Um, my mother. And my father, you know, they were divorced, you know, early in my childhood. And so it was just my mom and 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 the four of us. Oh man, y'all going way back with these photos. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, me and my three sisters, or three of my sisters, and um, um, you know, Chanel was the brainiac, you know, she was always reading a book, had her head buried in a book somewhere. Danielle was actually the singer of the family. Danielle was always singing. Mm -hmm. And Crystal was the dancer, you know, she was in the Re Revelators and all that stuff. And um, I was just, you know, a knucklehead, you know? <laughs> and um, uh, there's there's mama girl. <laughs> um, so when I found, you know, the, the Boys and Girls Club, and actually when I first came to the Boys and Girls Club, they had just switched it over. When I got there, it was the Boys Club. Yes. And they had switched it over to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Um, cause you know, my girl, my, my sister was a girl scout and I was the only boy and mom said, I'm gonna send it to the boys club. We're going to send it to the boys club. And a year later, here come the boys and girls club. And now my, all my sisters are here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, it's, it, um, looking back in retrospect, man, it's funny because my, my, my niece, uh, my eldest sister's daughter just turned 13. Wow. Um, and we were all, you know, gathered around, you know, the table, just chilling and hanging out, all of the siblings together and, you know, just talking and, you know, um, kicking it, I guess. And it was just, it was just very weird because we don't get a chance to do that very often now because we're all spread abroad. You know, I'm in Long Island, Crystal's in North Carolina, Chanel's in, you know, uh, White Plains, Danielle in Sleepy Hollow, she's a nurse practitioner. And so it's just, you know, we're all over the place. and. Um, it was just good to kind of come together for just a minute, catch up and see that some things never change. You know, our love for one another never changed. Um, our ability to support one another and 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 um, be happy about each other's happiness, you know, um, and, you know, be, be sad when the others are sad, you know. Uh, I think that's super, super important. Um, regardless of the, the dynamic of your family, I think it's super important to be connected uh, to your family, because at the end of the day, that's supposed to be the constant. 
you know, people change, times change, but you know, it, it, things things that are not supposed to change so much that your family can't be with you and 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 for you. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my family. I really am. Yeah, and take me through some of the educational uh, experiences. You know, it started in middle school. Um, I, you know, I, I took piano lessons before then, but in middle school at Franco Middle School in Mount Vernon, that's back when there was a Franco Middle School. Miss <laughs> um, um, Miller was the chorus teacher. Mr. Stamboni was the band teacher. Um, um, uh, I was in drama there. I was in the orchestra. I was in the band. I was in the chorus. Um, so that was my, I was at, it was a performing arts magnet school, but I was all up in the performing <laughs> arts, um, the magnet, you know, the, the, the department. And so I was, I played cello in the orchestra, I played saxophone and then clarinet in the band. And before you knew it, I was the accompanist for the, for the middle school chorus. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Miller had retired and then Ms. Beth Jennings Eager had joined, um, the staff there and, she kind of like took me under her wing, <clears throat> uh, taught me piano, taught me how to, you know, accompany myself. Um, I, at the time, I believe I can fly. By, yes. um, a very famous artist who I won't name right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I, I got up in front of all of my peers, you know, in the auditorium, some, I don't know, five, 600 peers and sang, I believe I can fly while accompanying myself. And that was when I realized, I was like, oh snap, this is what I want to do. And um, we was away on Christmas tour, uh, we was away on Christmas break. I was at my godmother's house and I saw uh, the Boys Choir of Harlem mm. on PBS or Fox News or whatever it was. And I looked out there and I was like, oh shoot, like <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> And uh, I came back, I had my piano lesson with Miss Eager and she was like, why are you so distracted? What's going on? I said, I keep thinking about this choir that I saw on TV. You should have seen them. I kept going and I said, you know, the boys choir Harlem, boys choir Harlem. She said, oh yeah, I know, I know about that. I said, yo, I just, I wish I could do that. I wish I could get out of the, because at the time, you know, I, I guess it, it, anybody could say this, you know, when you, when the only life you've ever known is inside your little town, inside your little, you know, box. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my, the only life I really ever knew, really, um, per, on a personal level, was the, within the four miles, the four square miles of Mount Vernon. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I but know. I had seen <laughs> this, I had seen this thing that was like trying to grab at me. You know, yeah. so I said, let me, let me. I, I just want to speak it. I want to put it in the atmosphere. I want to <laughs> say it in the air. I want to be in the Boys Choir Harlem. And Ms. E I didn't know this, but Miss Eager at the t you know had placed kids in the Metropolitan Opera. She had placed kids on Broadway. She had done a bunch of stuff that I had no clue. I just thought she was my middle school chorus teacher. And mm -hmm. she said, "Practice your, your notes. I'll be right back." She went into the main office, to the principal's office, used his phone, and made and set up an audition for me to get into the Boys Choir of Harlem. <laughs> And the rest is history. I, uh, she, uh, she came in that room and said, "I got you an audition on Saturday." I said, "You lying." <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, "I got you an audition." She said, "But you got to pull your grades up. You got to do this, that, and third. And I was like, "Bet." You know what I mean? I, I was on the right. piano roll that semester, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, um, pulled it up, and I went and audition. Had my little tape ready. You know, I was gonna sing. I believe I could fly. I'm gonna do wow. it. And, you know, I got in and next thing you know, I was traveling the world, traveling all over the country with 50 other singers and, the, you know, the kind of rest, the rest is history. Last bit of, of, of the education, Boys Choir Harlem was a, another level of musical education for me. They, they, they put a lot of emphasis on academia, but also your artistic education was, was super, super important, um, you know. I was used to choir rehearsal once a week, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the Boys Choir Harlem rehearsed every day. You know, our school day began at eight, eight o'clock in the morning. We didn't leave school until four or five o'clock. And if you were in the touring division, you didn't leave the building until 6 p.m. 
you know? And so it definitely installed a, 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 a vocal performance discipline in me um, that enabled me to, to kind of pursue some things that I would have never even dared to pursue or dream about had it not been for the, the, the tough love that I got there at the Boys Choir Harlem, Tanglewood and Skidmore College and all that, that all came as a result uh, of, of, of the Boys Choir Harlem. Um, and then in 2002, you know, I was out of high school, I was done with the Boys Choir Harlem, uh, other than alumni performances. And my church had done a little project with the Brazilian church. And I sang, I did all the vocal arrangements for their, their album. And they said, we wanna take you to Brazil to release the album. So that was my first time traveling without the Boys Choir Harlem and the rest is history. I was like, all right, this is it. I'm never doing nothing else. I'm doing this. And well, so I, go ahead. Yeah, that I, I remember Miss Eager. Um, yeah. And because, you know, I used to spend a lot of time over there at the middle school. And, uh, mm. she, and I remember her telling me that you had gotten in uh, to the boys. <laughs> and you know what? I mean, you know, when when you have kids at the club, right? Mm -hmm. you, you you feel like you're an extended dad, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. you're not dad, but you're an extended dad because when you come in, you know, those four walls, my responsibility for all the kids is to be protective, to guide, to guard, to govern as a father. And, and so when she told me, I'm, I'm you know, just as though you were my son, mm -hmm. it was a very super proud moment for me. I, I, I was just so floored uh, with you getting wow. in. I was so excited for you, you know, and, and it is what people don't know. And, and again, this is interactive. So if you have some questions for Milton, um, Pastor Van. Milton is cool. <laughs> the, the apostle, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and you got some questions and you want to interact. Uh, we, we we can see you at the bottom of the screen. But, um, you know, uh, please uh, join us uh, in, in your in any comments or questions you may have. And, um, and, and I have to say that on the show, I always talk about my grandfather giving me a nugget. Right. So I got a nugget for you. Come over here, boy. You know, and I, I'm like, uh, I'm looking in his hand for something, <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't he didn't have anything in his hand. He wanted to give he wanted to say something to me that he thought what I needed to know. And it was important. And, uh, you know, the updated version is uh, Damon Lillard and Kevin Love dropping dimes. Right. Mm -hmm. So right there, I mean, whoever's listening and and if there's some young people listening and if there's some parents listening that have children, Milton just, number one, a set a number of things, right? He found his niche. He found his passion, right? And then he spoke it, right, into existence. And sometimes you can say it in a prayer, right? We can pray, God, Lord, help us. But sometimes when you verbalize something, Right. Uh, he verbalized it and he said, I want to be in the boys Harlem Acquire. You know, it occupied his mind and somebody else caught that. Right. And and did something about it. If you never say anything right about what it is that you want to accomplish. Right. I said it. I wanted to be in an NBA. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, Mr. Mm -hmm. and then Mr. Jones and the boys, I said, I want to be in the NBA. And Mr. Jones said, uh, Okay, what are you willing to give up mm. for that? <laughs> you know, and and so you dropped a you know a real dime, a real nugget about speaking your dream, you know, and and then following up on it by you know, and then you get challenged by it. when she did what she did, right? Like when my teacher told me in the sixth grade, I said I want to play in the NBA. Right. Mm. And I said, I asked her what I have to do. My gym teacher, my teacher, what I have to do to get an MBA. She said, number one, you got to graduate from elementary school, middle school, high school. You got to go to college. And I started thinking about, man, do I really love basketball? You know, because I was trying to get away from that. So but it ignited something inside of you when she said you got to get do better grades. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. All of a sudden, no problem. Yeah. Right. And so I always say, you know, don't chase the money, but follow, follow the love. When you find something you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. So um, and, I got I to gotta say something there on that. Yeah, actually, um, which is something that a lot of people don't know about me. But at that time, man, they had I had been evaluated. Um, they, you know, told me I had dyslexia. They told me that um, ADHD. They had put me on Ritalin and then on Adderall. Ooh. It was a whole thing. Like, you know, I, I was in the seventh grade taking psych meds, you know, to, to help me focus and concentrate in school. And I found my niche and got in music. And the next thing you know, you know, I was able to 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 pull up in a lot of areas that that I struggled, struggled in for a very, very long time because I had an incentive, because I knew what a big a large part of my purpose was. And a lot of the challenges that I was having at the time began to dissipate only because somebody was willing to invest some time and energy and effort into helping me to 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 find out that I love music. Wow. And Geneva didn't need that she make a she made a comment down there. I don't know if you can see that. Oh wow, we had so much fun at the at the club. Although I was not musically blessed back then, tapes worked miracles, and that's the truth. We <laughs> sang the tapes back then. I remember taking the choir to different nursing homes to perform for them, and they loved it. Sterling, Michelle, Lowe's, and Lozy at the time were awesome soloists. I remember that. I remember mm-hmm. that. Enjoy being a choir director. Nice seeing you. Same here, Miss Dindy. Good to see you again. <laughs> And before we get to some more questions, uh, one and now you you know you're married. I want to talk a little talk about your wife and how important it is. Um, in August, um, in August the sixth, uh, man, my wife will be married 38 years. So I know the importance of of marriage. You see, there a couple of my friends got married, Michelle, in their in their second anniversary. So talk to me about you about you your wife man um i met uh, i met charlotte at straight gate um which was my home church um her grandfather was my mentor um uh, pastor charles albert um senior and um you know at the time you know i, I won't think about charlotte I, I won't think about her i you know her father her grandfather was like my mentor i just wanted to be him Mm-hmm. Um, pastorally, you know, um, right. he had such a calm demeanor. He, he had a grace of uh, being able to deal with people. Um, he was the head chaplain for all correctional facilities in 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 Westchester County, um, and he was able to kind of just handle the, the the church responsibilities and the civic responsibilities with such a grace. I was like, yeah, I want to spend time <laughs> with him. I want to spend time with him. And he had seen me through some, you know, mess and foolishness as a young teen and, early, you know, in my early twenties. And, um, so, you know, it was, that's how I met. That's how I, it was his granddaughter, you know, uh, Charlotte yeah. is his granddaughter. And, um, um, let the record show Charlotte came after me. <laughs> she you came know, you gotta me. go home, right? You gotta go home. <laughs> well, you Charlotte made me came. home. <laughs> she came looking for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> but okay, um, okay. yeah. Anyway, we've been we've been married for for uh, three years. Uh, last May, um, it's an uphill journey. You know, learning learning a, another person and learning how to live life with another person. Um, but you know, it, it, it it's it's it, it's um, a huge learning experience. Um, if I've learned nothing, it's learning, um, it's beyond more than compromise, more than anything, it's learning what is important to sacrifice and mm. learning what is important to let go of in order to um, live the life that you're, that, that, that you're called to live. And so um, being married to, to Charlotte has, has taught me um, to let go um, of what's necessary to let go of so that um, I can live my best life now. Awesome, man. Yeah, that, that that's awesome. I think we got to, uh, yeah, yeah. 
let me tell you something. There's nothing like, you know, because I think the most important thing that my wife and had and I had before we even got married was friendship. Mm. You know, and um, for me, friendship and communication are the two most important things. You know, if, if you don't have friendship and you and you stop communicating, then um, it, there's going to be a problem. And, <laughs> you know, but, uh, and, and uh, you, your wife is a is a is a, uh, a relative of my wife. Uh huh. I did hear about that. Yeah. Uh, is a cousin because uh, you related to the to the Alberts. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, and and and. You know that's that's awesome man and yeah yeah and and so so talk to me a little bit i i, I there's some things here uh well let me let me give you this question yeah be, give you a couple of questions here and then we're gonna have right. some, we're gonna have some individuals uh pop on so anthony tj johnson i don't know if you know tj What's, what's the most valuable lesson you learned while you were on the road? Mm. Um, or on tour, I think I remember seeing that. Um, yeah. the, the, I think the most valuable lesson for me um, while being on the road, it took me a little minute to, to figure it out. Uh, it's, it's more faith-based actually. Uh, and not and not music based. I mean, yeah, I learned a whole lot musically and I learned a whole lot professionally and all that stuff. But I think what I learned uh, most um, was that um, the life you live off the pulpit, the life that you live when you don't have a mic in your hand is the most valuable asset um, when it comes time to evangelize, when it comes time to uh, be an example. Uh, the people that I was around, the people that the musicians, the the fans, the you know all that kind of stuff. The fans of the artists that I was singing with, anyway. I didn't realize it, but they were watching me too. They were watching me too, and it's important um, to live the life that you that you preach about, to, to live the life that you're singing about, um, or at the very least, be able um, to strive toward that, to strive for it. Um, and I think that that's a, that's the most valuable lesson that I've learned uh, so far, and am learning. I'm still learning it. Um, yeah, being on being on tour and, and being a traveling musician. Yeah, and I, I mean, you know, it, it's tough being at home and the testing trials and challenges being at home, right? On the road, it never ends. I mean, you know, mm. it, yeah, it just new stuff pop up. And new challenges, you know, all the time. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when you're on road, <laughs> you know, it's, it's it, you know, yeah, it's not home. You know, some people have to sneak up on you at home, but at, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> on the road, you you gotta be careful. But, yeah, you do. And, and somebody named Crystal Moorhead, <laughs> Milton, why didn't you teach your sister how to sing? Kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, so proud of you. Uh, uh, to be on, I guess, on the podcast from the Boys and Girls Club under Mr. Bar, I guess, it's Mr. Moore's leadership. Yeah, you know, you know, Crystal is. <laughs> yeah, I know who Chrissy is. <laughs> I know Chrissy, that's the Irish twin. Yeah, um, yeah, that's also awesome, man. Yeah, good stuff. That's my good old sister. Yeah, so I, I seen a few questions about uh, your experience with Darlene Love. Mm. Um, I met Darlene, believe it or not, at Straight Gate. She was a member of Straight Gate. Um, I was worship leader there. And um, at the time that I started singing for Darlene, I had just, I was singing for, for, for a gospel artist. Um, I was singing for Donna McClurkin at the time. And um, I went with, with Donnie to sing at the McDonald's Gospel Fest. He was a guest mm. artist at the time. And um, Darlene was one of the judges for, you know, the contestants of the McDonald's Gospel Fest. You know, Darlene, Steve Harvey, and all of them. So mm -hmm. um, she saw me singing with Donnie, and she was like, oh, you, you're trying to sing 
background for real. Like, you know, be, <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to be a professional for real. I said, well, you know, that's what I've been trying to do, you know. <laughs> and um, at the time that something popped up one day, we were all at dinner after service. Me, Bishop Powell and Darlene and her husband and a few others. And um, she said, listen, my tenor uh, can't make one of my shows. I got a couple of shows coming up. And the, the guy that usually sings for me can't make it. He's on the road with Bruce Springsteen. And she said, listen, can you just fill in? Hmm. I said, I would be honored to fill in. Honored. I said, so just send me the music and I'll learn it and I'll show up. And we did, it was like a small little rehearsal at somebody's house. Like it was so informal. Hmm. And next thing you know, like I was up at Joe's pub singing with Darlene Love. And then it was a step out part where I was like singing a duet with her. Wow. It's my first show with her. And I was like, this is, but I remember at the time, Darlene Love wasn't the Darlene Love to me. She was one of the church members, you know, but I was just glad to be there. And then I messed around and read her book and realized who she really, really was. Um, and next thing you know, the rest is history. I've been singing with Darlene now for going on 12 years. Wow. Um, and you know, I've been uh, her vocal director. You know, been making sure her sing the singers have got it together and helping her with the band and helping her with you know producing the show or helping that is. And um, she's just been a blessing to work for and a blessing to work with. Um, she's the best boss lady in the world. I mean, hands down. And because of her, I've been able and afforded the opportunity to sing for other artists and other icons that I that I've grown. Um, up loving and listening to James Taylor, <laughs> Harold King. You know, I sing at the White House for President Obama, all because I was, oh, that's the guy who sings for Darlene Love. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so it just it it just opened up so many doors. Ellie Holcomb, Paul Schaefer, you know, I was in a movie with Angela Bassett. You know, like it's all that kind of stuff was just <laughs> um a, a product of just singing some shoe op shoes in the background, trying to hold it down for Darlene Love. And so I owe her a, a great debt of gratitude um, yeah. just for taking me in. Well, Gifted, you know, I, told you, I, I tell you, that's the title I put, Gifted, right? And I think scripturally says, and your gift will make room for you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and bring you before great men. <laughs> yes, like, yeah. man. yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and who, I mean, tell me a little bit about, I don't know, you know, I, I, I know Dolly Love songs, mm -hmm. but I mean, I didn't know her until you. Okay. Okay. Um, Darlene's, uh, her first single, she was like 19 years old. Believe it or not, Darlene's going to be 80 years old in like a week and some change. Wow. Um, but so she, 1960 something, I think it was 1962 or yeah. Anyway, she came out with a song under Phil Spector called He's a Rebel. Um, and that was the song that started where, you know, her and the Blossoms. Um, mm -hmm. and then, um, some, you know, she was, she was continually on Phil Spector's label. Um, and she had put out quite a few other numbers and quite a few other hits. Um, but the, the 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 one hit that she is most famously known for is Christmas Baby, Please Come Home. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, every year on the Letterman show, we were on there singing Christmas Baby, Please Come Home, you know, getting all dressed up. You know, she's standing on top of pianos and saxophone players coming, <laughs> flying out of the ceiling and all that kind of stuff. And I was just sitting there <laughs> on the Letterman show going, Christmas, <laughs> just enjoying myself, having a ball, you know, yeah. snapping my fingers and singing Christmas. Right. Um, and that's how, you know, that, that that's that's the Darlene Love show in a gist, you know, but right. uh, she's just an amazing, amazing artist. And ama she's been through every, imagine 50 some plus years in the music business, learning, you know, how to, how to, how to deal and navigate through uh, racial discrimination, mm. um, you know, profiling, 
you know, being a woman in all of it as well. Um, so, you know, and then, you know, white musicians and white producers and white managers having to deal with having a black woman as their boss, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so she's an inspiration. She's, a, I mean, just an, an inspiration. And I'm so glad that God has given me the God has given me the opportunity to work for her. Yeah. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, what about uh, that? With all this, you know, all the travel, all the family, all those things. What about pastoring? Um, if I if, if if I never knew that I was supposed to sing, I knew I was supposed to pastor. I knew I was supposed to preach and pastor, and I knew that at four years old. Mm. Um. I came up under before Stray Kid. I, you know, my mother um, was um, my grandfather was a pastor. My mother's father, but um, after that, we went to uh, Abundant Life, a Tabernacle mm -hmm. of Prayer under Jasper Bishop Jasper Roll Jr. And he had a strong deliverance ministry. We had tent revivals and all that stuff. And I'm sure my sister Crystal can remember me being in the in the house, you know, with with one of her hairbrushes, you know. Preaching in that <laughs> microphone, yeah, um, laying hands on all her dolls, <laughs> <laughs> baptizing them in the in the in the. I, let me tell you something. I, I used to fill up the tub and baptize them dolls. <laughs> so, oh, you going down in Jesus' name today? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you but, like uh, you like you like the baptizing part? <laughs> oh yeah, I used to take them down, doc. Bring them up. Oh yes, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I knew then um, that I was that eventually, I, you know, the Lord was going to make it make it happen, or cause it to be that I would that I would pastor. Um, and to be honest with you, I thought that eventually I would pastor Straight Gate. I thought that um, Bishop Powell was just going to, you know, cause me to succeed him, and. Um, uh, Long story short is I got invited after three years out into Long Island um, to be a, a guest speaker for a church who had lost their pastors, or their pastor three years prior. So mm -hmm. they had been without a pastor for three years. Wow. And I got there and I preached for 15 minutes. And the founder of the church's daughter, um, who was 90 something at the time, said, you, we need a pastor, man. We need a pastor like you. <laughs> And I said, oh, you don't want a pastor like me because I'm never moving out here. I'm, I'm <laughs> never moving all the way out here. To you drive 15, 20 minutes past my church, you drive into the ocean. <laughs> it's For scary real. out there. No, it's scary oh, out there. Oh, my gosh. And Long Island is long. Yes, it is <laughs> long. So uh, I said, I ain't never coming out here. <laughs> and next thing you know, next month I had agreed to come back twice and then the next month three months and then three times and then before you know it i was out there every sunday preaching just hope you know and then the the bishop came out and asked me and appointed me to be their interim pastor and wow. i said perfect i'll be your interim pastor for six months i'll put that on my resume when it comes time to be a full-fledged pastor somewhere i'll be able to prove that i'm able to do this and cope with the the pressures and difficulties of being a pastor because i did an interim pastorate for six months Man, interim pastor, it was just like a bait. They were, they were just pulling me in. And next thing you know, I was being installed as a senior pastor of Jefferson Temple, uh, the Life Gate Church in Kutchog, New York. <laughs> and it's been uh, this August, next month, it, um, August 31st, um, uh, it'll be four years. Wow. So I, it's, I, I can't even believe it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, congratulations, man. I'm proud you. of you, man. Uh, yeah, but Long Island, man, it's scary. Yeah. I, you know, it ain't, it's not scary during the day. It's just scary at night. I mean, you could drive <laughs> off and you could drive off in the ocean and nobody will ever find you. And you wouldn't even missing. know it until you got wet. <laughs> One time, you know, Isaiah used to play wheelchair basketball. We used to go to Nassau. Mm. Uh, yeah, over there by the Nassau Coliseum and uh, the community college. And one time I missed the exit. You know, I was new going out there. I missed the exit. And somehow I got on this like Jones Beach and like you driving on a two lane and there's water all surround you. And it, yeah. was, and it was winter. 
And man, you know, I I I I never prayed like that before, but I was praying. Well, that, Cause you know Isaiah was young. I mean, he's like what 10, 10 or something. I'm like, if we if we drive off, you know, skid off into the water, they wouldn't know where we went. You know, wow. and, and there was no way to turn around. You had to wait till you get all the way around, you know, the thing, and then turn back around, come back across. I mean, yeah, man, I, I, mm. <laughs> I wow. pray for you. <laughs> and, Keep me in prayer. Yeah, I will. And uh, you know, quickly, um, I I have been trying to hook uh, you guys up for a long time. I have a good friend of mine. Okay. And I don't I don't know if you knew, if you if you know him, uh, Terry Menheim. We we grew up together, elementary school together, man. And uh, he's in the this Milton S. Terry Menheim, Milton Van, and Terry has been a Good long. You, we, we, we grew up in Bible Way together. Yeah. Oh uh, wow. In, in, in New Rochelle in high school, we graduated high school together, man. And he's been in the in the ministry and the gospel for a long time. And uh, I'll let you tell he he's extensive when it comes to the to gospel music. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Terry, uh, to Milton. Oh, I want you guys to meet, meet like for years. Okay, cool. You can hear me? Yes, we can. I, we can hear you. Okay, man, I, I've been just sitting here blown away with this young man, Milton, another product of the famous Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon, <laughs> New York. Um, and hearing that he came up under the bishop Bishop Powell, my good friend Wayne, and all of them are good roots, son. Good roots, son. Good <laughs> roots. But um, about, um, like Lowe said, man, we came through elementary school together, and he mentioned the sixth grade teacher telling him he had to go graduate high school, college, and all those things. And um, that was Miss Williamson, and one yeah. of my favorite, favorite teachers. All of our favorite teachers, for one reason. She was cute. She was cute. <laughs> she, she was. She was not cute. She was beautiful. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. that's what I tell Coach Lee all the time. I tell him that all the time, and he said, "You were something else, huh? Weren't you?" But um, <laughs> um, Lowe's has been a long time friend, and I've, I've I've watched his life. Sometimes when you grow up with people, you don't realize that you're watching them, and even from the sixth grade, he, we used to bend these hangers and, and hang them on the doors. And, you know, he would throw the ball in and stuff and stuff like that. And then we kind of separated during junior high school. I don't know how that happened. But then I came across him again in high school. And I've seen that there was a change in his life. And mm -hmm. he invited me to come to this youth conference in Peekskill, New York. And if you grew up in Mount Vernon during the time that we did, excuse me, I'm a church boy and I got gum in my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but uh, he invited me to come to this youth conference. And growing up in Mount Vernon, you heard evangelism. People mm -hmm. evangelized to you. That was a given. But at that time of my life, uh, ninth grade, I guess. And I'm like, man, I'm not getting saved until I get about 80 years old. You know, <laughs> I'm out. And Lowe's told me they had that ramp going up from the business section back over into where the classes were. And he says, if you commit to come, I guarantee you the enemy is going to try to stop you. Mm. I forgot what the girl's name was, but she was fine. She was so fine. And I was shy. You know, I was really shy. <laughs> And um, she walked up to me one day and she says, we're having a party this weekend and I want to invite you. And I had enough sense to know that that was the enemy, you know. And so I went to the to the, the thing in Pete's skill and that's not where I gave my life to the Lord at though. But um, I went there and where I actually gave my life to the Lord was at the Northside Boys Club mm -hmm. because we would have prayer, you know. And um, it was there. I said, Lord, I want to make a change. And that was because I seen Lowe's had made a change in his life. And, you know, we were in the same grade, 
but I looked at him as a brother and a big brother. I seen your mother was on here um, tonight. If she's still there, love you. Always will love you. Yeah, she told me to tell Milton hello too. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh um, my goodness! Hello. Talking about life to the world. Yeah, she go right there. <laughs> and um, but I don't know to say. Unfortunately, you know, when you're growing up in the church, sometimes. I was being groomed to be the next generation after my pastor, Bishop Odell Lyerly in New Rochelle. Mm -hmm. um, but um, coming out of high school, I got a young girl pregnant. Mm -hmm. And man, I didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to do. And so I, said, I went to Bishop. I said, Bishop, what do I do? And I went to my dad first. I said, Dad, what do I do? Son, you got to do the right thing. <laughs> and I went to Bishop Lyle and he explained the track that he wanted me to be on I could not have kids at a wedlock and um, he encouraged me put it that way he, mm. he encouraged me to get married mm. and, so mm -hmm. I, and so I did um, through that um, I had two children um, who I love dearly, but most importantly, what I do now, um, I don't minister in the pulpit that much anymore because I'm really not concerned about that. I'm really trying to, me, that's me. Mm -hmm. I'm, tr I'm mm -hmm. trying to reach men. And working with gospel artists, you come to realize that those who stand before us and sing, they need someone to minister to them as well, you know, on, on, on the real. Like um, mm -hmm, someone asked mm -hmm. you about asked you about touring, you know. When I managed, and I used to have artists, um, because I knew the real, real of the road. Mm -hmm. um, it was myself and someone else. We had keys to everybody's room, and mm -hmm. and, and we just show up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> see, you're a singer, but you know how those musicians are. <laughs> 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 and so we just show up because I just didn't want to be associated with any mess. Yeah. But now at this stage of my life, I work with independent artists who make records and who are trying to get to the next level of radio and recognition because I'm just getting back from the Stella Awards, just got back this morning. Um, I had stopped going to stuff like that years ago, but I just, I went this year. Um, it was great too. It was really, really great. But helping independent artists understand the business there are so many artists that sing and there's an artist that anyone who listens to gospel music knows her family knows her songs and she called me about three years ago and told me how do i get the rights back to my music mm. and i was like you know because she didn't own the rights you know so i work with independent artists and Although I love what I do, it is a job. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you people who are gifted, you are some moody people, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, and 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 I love all the pastors, and pastors are some moody people too. But um, I love what I do. But I'm so impressed. One, because man, you're a product of the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon. I think if they really had a list of everyone who came through <laughs> the halls of the Boys Club and the Girls Club of Mount Vernon, Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon. I mean, it would it would blow people away. But uh, Milton, uh, man, I'm praying for you. you, you you're, you're part of the legacy of Bishop Powell and, and, and Wayne. I, I was like, wow. And I was like, I never heard of this dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Wayne now about maybe five years. But, um, man, I'm impressed with what you're doing. You know, I'm praying for you. Um, you know, Lowe's, I don't, well, you, you never know. But um, if there's anything you may want to know about the business that you may be skeptical about, um, you know, just get with Lowe's. Shoot me a text. Shoot me an email. Don't shoot me a text. I read text real late, you know. Cause <laughs> see, see, Lowe's shave. But well, we got this gray, and you know, it's 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 earned, and it's for real. <laughs> but uh, man, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm so impressed how God has 
taking you from stage to stage, from platform to platform. Man, just keep a yielded life to God, and um, you haven't seen your best yet. You haven't seen your best yet, you know. So, but Lowe's, thank you, thank you for having me on here. I got a lot going on. Um, so, I'm waiting yeah, for thank you, Terry. Call from the airlines right now. You know, take them four hours to get back to me. But, um, right. man, I'm so impressed. And Lowe's, congratulations on your inductions. I said the New York State. Well, what do you call it? Upstate? upstate. Yeah, it's the New York upstate. State. Yeah, upstate uh, basketball. Yeah, congr yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, because people don't know how much you sacrificed. Mm. And I was talking to someone just this week. Um, it was because of something on Facebook. And they said, what was the first airline flight you took? <laughs> Can you take a guess, Lowe's? Nah. Oh, oh uh, what's that? What's the one with the uh, TWA? Yeah, I was going to say TWA. <laughs> <laughs> well, not the airline. What was the first flight? The first flight, I don't mine, know what that Mine was, was the Buffalo. Oh, I mine Buffalo. was, I guess it was to Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, man, that's that's a terrible flight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we came out to um, give you an award from the church, from the youth department, yes. where I was the youth director, and um, it was a terrible flight, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, Lowe's, I appreciate your life. I appreciate what you're doing. I like to transition as as you left the boys' club, and I'm I'm praying for you and Milton, man. Man, amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you amazing. so much. It's an honor to meet you. Thank you for the words of wisdom. Um, I'm looking forward to, to getting a chance to shake your hand one of these old days. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, come on. I'm in the Dallas, Texas area. Come on through. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to talk to the minister of music at my church. Um, I go to uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, and maybe okay. um, we, maybe we can work something out there. I, I looking usually forward don't, to it. I don't cross business with my church, but right. um, um, you're you're alumni of the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon, so that has weight. Oh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Thanks. All right, man. Terry, appreciate Close. you, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. That's my good friend, Terry. He's a, he been in the business, you know, he been in the business for a minute, man, and uh, he's good people. And, uh, man, I, I got one more pop-up. Uh oh, uh, person on here. I'm trying to get him on. Uh, well, I'm gonna ask you this question anyway. I got a question for you. All right. All right. Uh, so, two, two actually two questions. Um, who is the person that most impacted you? Impacted you the most outside of a family member? And 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 the second question is. No, I'll, I'll come to that when. Um, after you answer this one, the second one, who's impacting who's person you most outside of a family member? Most outside of a family member. Um, you know, that's a hard question to answer. And it could be more than um, one. You know what? I might have to give you a couple of, a couple of people. Um, my first vocal coach um, was um, my pastor's sister. Uh, Dana mm. Powell. Oh yeah. Um, she was the worship leader. She was the choir director. She was, you know, the it, everything. And um, I got on her nerves <laughs> until she <laughs> took me under her wing. Um, and you know, she, you know, since I'm seven, eight years old, you know, pulling, you know, hey, can I be in the choir? Hey, can you teach me? Hey, can you, you know. Uh, I'm sure there was a few times where she just wanted to smack me upside the back of my head, but um, she she was very very influential over um, my approach to music, my approach to worship, my approach to leading worship, my approach to ministry, um, um, my approach to preaching, even from a musical standpoint. It was just um, she was she was a huge influence over me and on me. Um, another influence was a, a, a musician and a, um, a label executive uh, by the name of Ben Clark. Well, on the business side, he's Jeff Grant, but we knew him affectionately as, as Ben Clark. And he served as a minister of music at one point. 
at Straight Gate, and uh, to this day is, you know, the Bible says that you have many teachers, but mm -hmm. you have not many fathers. Um, and he was a phenomenal influence over me um, when it came to, to um, trying my hand at being an artist and a songwriter and a singer. Um, as far as preaching is concerned, of course, Bishop Wayne Powell um, and was one of my first, um, well, Bishop Jasper Rowe was my first uh, exposure to preaching. Um, but Bishop Wayne Powell had a charisma that, that was that to this day is unmatched in my opinion. Mm, um, awesome. And he was a great influence over me. And then Pastor Carlton C. Sproul um, mm -hmm. is a father in ministry to me who launched me, who just, you know, in spite of my, my lack of discipline <laughs> as a preacher, continued to, to push me um, and um, toss me out there, you know what I mean? He wouldn't let me get devoured by the wolves. He would <laughs> snatch me back before I could, I could get devoured, but he wanted me to get a taste of it. He, he taught me to chase the fire um, uh, uh, of preaching and chase the fire of the anointing as I preached. Um, and I'll never forget him for that. I owe him a great deal because of it. Awesome. I can, I'll stop there. I ain't finished, but I'll stop. But, uh, yeah. I got a couple of people to pop on here. Um, All right. Well, we can pop on. Yeah, we can go ahead and pop them on. Let's see. Oh, boy. Who's this coming on up in here? Oh, well, I was. Come on. Uh oh. Hey, Uncle hey. Gordon. Okay. I've, 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 I'm not the greatest when it comes to this technology stuff, but I'm here now. Oh, boy. <laughs> so you, you got two cousins in the house. <laughs> Uncle Gordon got, is in got, the house. Uncle Gordon. And you yes. Trees on, on here, too, as well. Hi, cuz. How you doing? Hey, cuz. What's up? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Good so. to see you. Listen, that's that's my man right there, Pastor Milton. He already knows. Oh my God. <laughs> he already knows. He already knows. When oh, he first man. started, man, we're doing the voices of Emmanuel. I could always call on him, and he would be my special guest soloist every time we had a concert. And people would be like, How you getting Milton? I said, That's my that's my baby right there. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, yep, yep. I appreciate oh, I appreciate that. I do. I really do. Because you wow. really you would always make us special. Yeah. And recently we were. And recently we were we were in um in Charlotte, North Carolina. And you know Gordon uh -huh. has moved there. So we had the privilege to go have dinner with him and his wife yes. in Charlotte. And, we were honored, uh, we were honored to have you. Man, <laughs> we were honored to be there. <laughs> yeah. So you guys got any anything you want to say to Milton before? Well, I'm let Gordon go quickly. Okay. How you doing, Ned? Um, nephew in law, you okay? <laughs> hey, Uncle Gordon, I'm cool. I'm hanging in there. Okay. I I typed in a comment earlier on where you made reference to Charlotte um, going after and chasing you. You know you're gonna have to answer for that. You know? <laughs> I said I said that too. I was like, woo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said. He said, you got to go home. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, it. I'm I'm always answering for something. So, you know, I, I'm here. I'm in it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And how the saints at Jefferson Temple? Everybody's OK? Doing well. And matter of fact, I saw some of them on and they were commenting. Yes. So it was good to see them. Yep. Yeah, they're doing well. Um, I recall when we first drove out to um, uh, to the church out there, I thought I was um uh, Gonna fall off the end of the earth. I know. I know the Lord said that, that the earth is round, but I was kind of convinced that it was flat. We were, we were gonna drive off the edge. Wow! Um, but we had a really, really great time. We were out there with you, and um, um, uh, Milton knows that. But uh, he is very, very, very special to my wife. She just loves everything he does. You know, in terms of his music, uh, in terms of his ministry, and um, I just wanted to encourage you in the Lord. Um, and your comments concerning marriage. Marriage is work. That's all there is to it, you know. Um, and what you'll find is that as you all continue to submit yourselves to one another um, in the Lord, that um, you'll be more than 50% down the road. 
you know. Um, uh, I'd like to just to encourage you and to and to um, to make a point, and and this is just my my personal point. I'm not trying to say this is from on high, um, but your first ministry is your family, it's your wife and your children. It is not, and I'm not trying to um, distract from your your calling as a minister and as a pastor. Uh, but the word is very, very clear that um, a man that does not take care of his own household, his wife and his children, um, is worse than an infidel. So, and that's some, some pretty strong, that's some pretty harsh language. You minister yeah. to your wife, you minister to your children first. Um, and I remember my, um, my former pastor, Bishop um, um, uh, Dominic New Love Alate in Mount Vernon. He says, you know what? Before there was the church, before there was um, the tabernacle, before there was the temple, before there was um, 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 Holy Communion, before there was um, anything that we define as being part of the church itself, God created the family. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Family was created first. Um, and when we keep that in its proper perspective and understand that it's not just love, it's respect. Mm -hmm. Respect is as important, if not more important than love, then you won't be all right. You know, I and, noticed and, you know, hum humbling and submitting yourself to one another is crucial. You do it. You won't be OK. You don't do it. Forget it. Milton, yeah. uh, Pastor, I noticed that your uncle said uh, uh, three or four times children. I'm, 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 I know that every time I bring that up to you, you kind of give me that little face. So, um, you know, I know when my little cousin is ready to do what she got, you know, she wants to do. But I'm just saying I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, for that, that, that next generation of comedian, uh, uh, you know, gospel singing comedian coming forth. Um, but, um, you know, I'm really um, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm very proud of you. I have always been. I'm very proud of you. You know that you have a special place in my heart, and I have, I love all the songs. And but you know that my favorite is Adonai, and and I love it. And I don't know what it is about it that you know. And I always ask you, what are the words? Uh, you know, what are the words <laughs> you're speaking in? Was it Hebrew? Or Hebrew. Is it in Hebrew. And can you just say the words in Hebrew for me really quickly? I like the way it sounds. Uh, okay. Let me see if I remember them all. Micha mocha. By Elim Adonai, Micha Mocha, Nedarba Kodesh. Oof. Yeah, that's the beginning of it anyway. <laughs> and what is no it? No Hilot. Yes. Um, Ose Fele. Mm. All right. It was basically telling the story of Moses um, and his triumph, uh, him and, and Israel's triumph over, over Egyptian captivity. And then they, the second verse talk, goes on to talk about how Miriam danced and um, and they all sang, well, who is like the Lord? And, and how did you come up with those words to come forth in the in the Hebrew to fit the way it did? How did that come about? I didn't write the song. It's written by a, a man named Josh Nelson, um, who I, I was on a, a small miniature tour with um, another Jewish artist. And um, they were singing some duets at the time. I heard the song one time and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this song. And I decided that I wanted to cover it and do my own arrangement of it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I, I recorded it. And then the, 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 the other person that's singing with it on the album is the man who wrote it, Josh, Josh Nelson. Okay. And then I went and got Rabbi Serkman and Bishop Powell to kind of narrate it, to kind of culminate, you know, a lot of my exposure to the Christian, um, uh, Jewish fellowship that that I was exposed to as, as a young man, 20 something years ago, uh, Larchmont Temple um, and um, and Strickey Church were fellowshipping once a year at the very least uh, yeah. for some 20, 21, 22 years. Well, I appreciate you, man. I want to, uh, you got, I've got about a minute here, one minute. And I want, I want to ask you this last question, man. I want you to say something to uh, give, uh, uh, some words of encouragement to some young people out there or some advice to some young people out there um, that may be listening or a parent that may be able to share what you say with their children. You know what, I, I, um, I'll give you my life sermon. Uh, at least it's, it's, it's the one life sermon today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, don't focus so much on being, 
focus more on becoming. God is the same, the same God who calls you to be is the same God who calls you to become. And you don't have to be afraid of the process of becoming. You're gonna fall, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna twist things up, you're gonna jack it up sometimes. But God is 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 the same God who, who calls you to be is the same God who calls you to become. You don't have to don't walk in fear, don't walk in resentment, just focus on becoming. Becoming the man you're supposed to be, the woman you're supposed to be, the pastor, the singer, the drummer, the floor sweeper, the husband, the wife, the whoever you're called to be, God also gives you the strength and the grace to become. Amen. Awesome, man. man. So Milton, I want to say, man, I love you, man. I love you right back. And uh, I I really enjoyed this time with you. And and thanks a lot for taking time out your busy schedule and and spending some time with me. No, it's an honor. It's an honor. I'm glad that we got a chance to do it. Yes, sir. I I love you, Milton. Thank you so much. I love love you, you. Tracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love you, (laughs) cuz. I love you all, too. So to all those. Love you, Uncle Gordon. Who were patient tonight. We started a little bit late um, because of some technical difficulties, but I want to thank you for your support. I want to say I love you and God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful, blessed week. All right. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Bye-bye. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E dot com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's Moore and on Facebook at Lowe's Moore Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other.